Hi, I'm Tony. And I'm John. And this is AstroCast. Okay, and welcome to episode three of AstroCast. It's been a while since we've gotten an episode out, but we have real lives, and we don't get paid for this. So, uh, I'm gonna go over the show notes with you real quick here. John has been so kind as to type them up this time and put them up on our site, which will probably be changing again, um, not anytime soon, because I don't have any time soon. Um, but today we're gonna cover two different things. We're gonna start out by covering Astros AGIs, which is an Astros Gateway interface. Um, you can write these in many different languages. We're going to do ours in Perl today. You can do them in Java and PHP. Uh, See, you can do them in pretty much any, any language. Any language. Um, on our show notes, we have two different ones we have listed. One's called Call Check. Um, that actually checks a number against the database, and based on what your phone number is, it then corresponds to what it's what it's supposed to continue from that point on. What occurrences occur after the number's checked. Um, we're going to do another one, which we're actually going to type up and do as an example here, which is a password one, which pretty much is the same idea, except it checks against a password, and if password equals true, then it goes on one thing, if it fails, it goes on somewhere else. Um, we're actually going to run a menu system interface with this as well. And then the big news of the whole day of our show is going to be uh, the free G729 codec from Intel. So uh, we're going to get into that. And we're not going to delve into the legality of it. It is free as long as you're not making money off of it. Now, we're not making money off the show, so we can download it, we can use it, and show it to you all. Um, if you want to send us some money, though, for other reasons. Yeah, we'll take away the G729 code. Yeah, we'll take it away if you want to send us money. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> Uninstall immediately. <laughs> so we're going to get started here real quick. John, why don't you give me a quick overview a little bit more about what an AGI script okay, is. Okay, so basically, you, using the Astros Gateway interface, we can uh, talk back to Astros during a, a call. So basically, you know, in your priority list, um, one of your one of your things that you can do is call an AGI script and feed back information back into Astros. So, for example, in our password check script, the user will type a phone number in or type type a password into their phone. The password then gets sent to the AGI script. The AGI script sends back, sends back a variable that's called allowed. Allowed is either equal to true or false. If allowed is equal to false, it goes to some place, probably asking them to re-enter their password. True will take them somewhere else. In our case, the menu makes system. All right, so the best way to explain this is probably just get started. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to do is, is we're going to go ahead and download the AGI, what I like to call the AGI connector. Um, what it does is it allows uh, Perl to talk to asterisks. So I've already got it on my clipboard, so I should just be able to paste it right in there. So I'll put WGIT in front of it. Point oh, point oh 0.08 is the latest version. As of this recording. As of this recording, and it hasn't been changed in like two years, so you're probably going to be okay. <laughs> so, it's going to download. 
simple, simple to extract, just like that. And then we go into the asterisk directory, or the asterisk pro directory. That's a simple Perl makefile.pl. Type make, which make actually installs it for you, but just just follow along with the rest of our any of our other things. We did a make install. All right, and I've already created a test application, which I'll just show you. Test to make sure the AGI was installed correctly. All this application does is includes the Asterisk AGI into the in, in, into this Perl program. It creates a new variable with the AGI. Reads any input that gets passed to it, which doesn't really matter because there's no input getting passed to it. And then it goes and sets a variable called action to go. Basically, this doesn't do a single thing. It would do nothing for you if, it, if you actually got it into the asterisk application unless you did something with the variable called action. So, but we can test it on the command line just to make sure that everything works okay. So we just do that by the first thing we do is a is a change mod plus x test.pl. Make sure that when in, inside of your test PL, that when you've included, when, the, the first line of your application is a hash followed by a bang and user bin Perl. What that what that verifies is that uh, that your interpreter knows what to do. So when you set it executable, you can execute it like a real application. So we're gonna go ahead and run it. It sits there, and waits for input, or checks the input, hit enter. It says you can see that it sets a variable called action to go, and the application finishes. So what we need to do next, we're going to, since we're going to write our password application, is, um, create, is create a database for it. So we, we do MySQL for this, and I'm hoping that uh, you guys have MySQL already installed with the password. If not, um, there are docs, I believe, in the uh, rc.mysqld located in uh, etcrc.d uh, that Patrick wrote about how to install bias go up correctly on, on a Slack device. All right, so I'm in. So I'm going to go ahead and create database. And most of the time when you log in, instead of being user of John, it would probably be root or something similar. But he's on my box. But I'm on Tony's box and I need to create myself an account. So. All right, create database. Hello routing. And we can see from our, from our show notes here that Call routing is the name of the database, and I'll show you this in a second. So then we're going to use call routing. Before we do anything, let's just go ahead and grant all privileges on uh, call routing dot star to call router at localhost identified by call router. And for people who don't feel comfortable using this in the long run, um, <clears throat> there is an application out there called MySQL Administrator. It's for Windows and Linux. I'm not sure if it's for Mac or not. But uh, and then you also install a query browser as well, which you can log from mysql.com, and it's all a graphical interface. So I'm not you can do it this way because I don't know what the hell I'm doing all the time. So uh, I use the graphical interface on it. Apparently, I don't have access to um, to grant that user privilege. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Tony log in as wrote here. Normally, you can do these these steps consecutively, but I guess that we can't. I can't log in my own. All right. Okay. So. that gives that user full access to that database. All right, so now we need to create our database table. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to say create table uh, let's call it um, passwords. We're going to say id int 11 comma comma auto Increments. It's a 
this, this field cannot be null. And uh, we're going to say password. We're going to call that a var char. Make that up to 255 characters. We need to, do, we need to set the primary key as ID. Okay, so now we can do explain. Now you can see that we've got two fields in there, one called ID and one called password. So then we go ahead and we say insert in, into passwords. And then we gotta say we gotta tell what field we don't we're not inserting anything into ID. We're looking at MySQL do that for us. We're going to make our password be 234. Alright, so now if we do a select star from passwords, we'll see that we have an ID of 1 and a password of 1234. If you were to insert another record similar to 1238, you'll see that the increment field went up by 2. This, doesn't, this does nothing more than simply um, gives it a, a primary key value, something that you could um, a unique, a unique yeah. identifier at all times, so it'll never re re or reproduce the same identifier, so you can always call it. All right. All right. So I've already copied in our password application from the from the website. The only I did notice I did notice an error um, in what I had posted. I had I didn't test what I posted before I posted it. I forgot to put the bang after the pound sign. Other than that, this should work perfect. Now let me just give you a quick rundown on what what we do here. Uh, use DBI tells it tells uh, Perl to be able to use the asterisk or not the asterisk, the MySQL interface. The use asterisk AGI tells it to use the asterisk modules. This sets a new variable into asterisk. You're basically going to use all of these lines right here in any one of your any one of your asterisk AGI applications because um, that's just the way it works. It, you basically, this line here you're going to always need. This line here you're going to always need. This line here, you, know, you may not use DBI because you might not use a database interface. But um, basically, this this is what you have to use. So now we get into our database stuff. What I've done here is I've got a, this this line here. I've got to create syntax. I've got a syntax to connect to my database. I can think. Um, basically, I'm connected to a MySQL database called Call Routing with the username of Call Router and the password of Call Router. Pretty simple. What I've, what I've done here is I've created a line that actually counts the number of arguments that get passed to passwordcheck.pl. If the arguments are less than one, then I automatically don't even don't even query the database and I say the variable I set the variable called allowed def allowed defaults because we're looking for a password. Asterisk didn't provide us with the password, which means the user might just press the pound key. Okay. Next thing I do is is I take the password and I just make a variable so it's easier to, to, to work with inside the application called dollar sign pass to the very first argument value that was passed in the array. Okay, the next thing I do is this is actually my SQL query. I select the count from passwords where password is equal to dollar sign pass. Very straightforward query. Um, the next thing I do is the, I, tell, I tell Perl to prepare the SQL statement then I tell Perl to execute the statement. All right. The next line, I set the variable called count to, to absolutely nothing, so that way it's been initialized, we can use it later, and it'll work. Then we have a while statement to actually go and grab that count variable out of, basically when you do this query, it's only going to return one row every time. I still put it in the while query, so that way I can grab the first the first element of, of the query, which it only ever returns one thing. Then. Uh, if the count is greater than zero, then I set the variable true, it's meaning, meaning there was there was at least one record that would have been returned. If it's zero, then I say false because that means they were authenticated. Let's go ahead and test this application. Oh, and first, first and foremost. All right. So we go ahead and we run. Password check.pl. Let's run it with nothing. We passed no variable. It automatically set the allowed variable to false. It didn't even hit my SQL. And one thing it did was is it connected to the SQL database because that's how we put the program in. Now let's pass 1234 as my password. OK, 
Okay, it set my variable allowed to true because that's a password that's in the database. But if I was to do 1239, which is not in the database, it should pass a false, which it does. Which it does. So let's, let's actually use this in a real world asterisk uh, extension. So if we, if we just edit our extensions.com, we've already got some things in here. And uh, basically, we, we're going to create a new context called uh, check password. And let me show what's here so that way I get. All right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say extend 700. And I'm going to go ahead and background the sound. And I'm going to say, please enter your, which is a canned Allison Smith that says, please enter your. <laughs> and then I'm going to go, and I'm going to introduce something new here. I don't think we've used this yet. It's, called, it's the read command. And what the read command does is it allows us to play a sound, and then it allows us to set a variable. We're going to set a very well called pass. So basically, what Alice is going to do is say, please enter your password and just sit there and wait. And it waits for a, a designated number of timeout seconds before it falls into the timeout context, which we're not going to worry about, we're not going to teach you about today. But um, basically, what it will do is hang up. Okay? Let me extend 700, 100, 3. And then what we're going to do is actually. Um, Run our AGI script after they've uh, after you know after they've entered their password and followed, followed it with the pound key. So in order to do that, we're going to do AGI comma slash root slash I forgot where it was, so I'm going to I think I called it pass password check that PL right there. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that because I have no shame. All right. All right, so that's going to execute that, but we haven't passed it a variable. All right, this is something new. We haven't talked about variables before. Basically, what we do is we do pipe, dollar sign, the variable name that we're going to pass, which we got right here. This is our variable that we set. And there you go. So now it's going to run that application with that variable as the password. So it's pretty much exactly when, as John typed it earlier, um, where type password check.pl and then he actually put the argument right behind it. It's the same exact thing, this is just putting the code in behind it for us. So basically I'm going to run 700 4 or 700 priority 4 and then I'm going to say go to if which is a new which is a new uh, command. And then the variable Allowed, and allowed. If you remember, gets passed from the AGI script. Okay. If allowed is equal to false, meaning they didn't authenticate correctly, we're going to go to four to four thousand. Otherwise, we're going to go to priority five. And that like that. All right. So then. Five, we're gonna we're just we're just gonna can something and we'll add a menu in a second here. Playback uh, GT this my favorite one. We also have to make another one called seven hundred comma four thousand comma and we're gonna playback Valid, and then we're also going to play back type This will make a lot more sense when Tony makes the test call. Pretty much what we're doing is we're calling individually the different prompts that Allison's pre-recorded. Yeah. So 
invalid is whatever prompts is just a single word. Password is just a single word. So right now we're calling invalid password, Allison, and then we're going to play back one more. It's a predefined one that's already there. And we're going to shoot it back to 700, priority one. All right. So we just double check to make sure that everything looks good here. So we're going to background the sound that says, I haven't included it yet. I haven't included it yet. So i got to include, check, password. So then we background, please enter your, and she's going to say password, and she's going to wait. Now, one more interesting thing that you can do here that I'm just going to throw in, since we just happened to make our passwords be four characters, you can type the number four, or simpler, use the comma, because that's what we used before. And what that does, that expects four digits. So you don't actually have to hit the pound key when you're done. It actually automatically skips to the next, to the next priority. So I'm not going to put that in here right now, but just keep in mind, you can do that if you expect all of your passwords to be four characters. We don't expect that in ours. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we call our password check.pl with the variable of pass, which we set right there. Then after that, it does a go to if. Let's make sure that our syntax is right. We've got to have a starting parenthesis needs an end parenthesis, and a starting bracket needs an end bracket. So we've got a starting parenthesis with a dollar sign, starting bracket, quote. I mean, this looks pretty good. And it's with a question mark. The question mark is um, basically if the if the what you're checking there is true, uh, or the you know what what's in the what's in the false box what what it equals. If this is true, meaning in our case, if the if if password check .bl passes back the word false in the allowed variable, then we're going to go to four thousand. Otherwise, we're going to go to invalid voicemail or invalid password, and that's going to flip it back to one. Another thing I want to add in here, extend 6 So that way we're sure that we it works. So, so I'll go to asterisk, reload. Tony's going to call 700. Basically, I actually did this backwards. The password is before what it says. So, you go ahead and dial over to get Tony. So, if Tony enters an invalid password, if nine 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 nine. That option is invalid. So there I've entered a correct password, which then passed it on to our comment that we said, which was VM, or not VM, but just TT-Weasels. TT-Weasels. So, Allison didn't really have a good, um, you know, invalid password prompt, so I just, I just grabbed a prompt. So, I mean, you could probably clean this up by either hiring Allison to make some more recordings or Doing your own. make your own recordings. Get Audacity or drone. You have to go. Yep, use, we can use socks to convert them. I can show you how to do that, actually. We'll maybe save that for later. That might be another episode. Um, okay, so basically, this does absolutely nothing for us, but it gets us, it gets us a starting point. So basically, let's build a quick menuing system to do just a couple of... Uh, Stupid things that you can do other ways, but let's just—it'll give you an idea on how a menu system actually works. what it looks like. Well, how, yep, how it works. So, all right. So I'm just going to leave this alone. In fact, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to say right there. 
4,000 go to 1. So there it is. It won't sound so crappy then. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to do some more canned Allison. And I'm going to get lazy because everybody knows what I'm doing now because we've gone over this every episode. easy to figure out exactly what I'm going to have it say here, mostly because it's in the show notes and um, because it kind of actually reads, out, it reads yeah. out as I'm typing. <laughs> if you actually look at your code and if it looks wrong when you're saying it out loud, it's probably not going to sound right either. Asterisk has um, a set UID on reboot, 
It's not recommended. I wouldn't recommend uh, you doing a set UID on reboot, but whatever. We're just doing this for something example to show you that you can do that. Yep. Extend. It could be something as simple as accessing voicemail or something else to that effect. Yep. 7,000. And now, if you remember, number two said to enter the extension of the person you'd like to reach. So we're going to read the variable, which is ext. And we're going to say, if you, <laughs> this is nice, if you know extension dial comma ext. If I actually type all this in right, I would be so impressed because I didn't type it in right there. <laughs> what am I doing? That's right. It's the variable in front of the sound. All right. So basically, it's going to shoot us into 7,000 and say, if you know the extension of the person, you'd like to reach dial it now. OK? So extend 700. We're just going to assume that they're going to use SIP to, to dial it out. Actually, before we do that, let's make sure they didn't enter nothing. <laughs> and we're going to use a go to if. And we are going to copy and paste again. And if basically if they've entered nothing, we're going to send them back to 7,000. So if it's if ext equals nothing, send them to 7,000. Otherwise, send them to 7,002. Okay. Say 7,002. We're going to dial zip slash variable. And when they're all done talking, let's make sure that, that we pass them to the right area, which will be 700, comma, 7003, comma, yeah. All right. You could also at this point send them back to the menu, but it's probably kind of pointless, or maybe you want to. It's all to you. All right. Next one we're going to do is if they press 1, if they press 1, we're going to send them into the voicemail system. So we're going to say, Voice mail main. And we're also going to make sure that at the end, hang up. And this will probably break, but let's give it a shot here. Go ahead, Tony. say two it's because I think two is in the digits folder. Var spool asterisk. No, actually it's var lib lib asterisk uh, sounds digits. version of asterisk doesn't have um, two in it. So we are just going to nuke that. It's okay. It'll sound different. It'll, it'll sound wrong, but um, basically we're going to nuke it um, because we don't want to delete that context and we got to change everything. Now, for some reason, this must not be a completely full. 
full install of asterisk like the box that I did on. Correct. 
We just know you can't use it if you're using it for money, or if you make money from using it at all. So for education and stuff like that, guys look into it because we void all warranty towards what you said on this. All right, so I'm gonna use my email address, which I hope still works. Uh, and we go down to somewhere. Not quite. Yeah, it's spelled. It's dominated USA and not United States. Yeah. All right. In order to hear about us, blah blah blah. blah. All right. So then. See, now you can say other and astrocast. <laughs> all right. So now, with all luck, if Microsoft Outlook works, G729 different than everything else. I can finish that up while this is downloading. G729 is an extremely compressed codec, but it still sounds awesome. So you can, you can, um, I think it's like eight kilobits or something like that is all it uses. I think that includes packet overhead, and uh, I, it works awesome. I think that's the default codec in Skype. So um, it, it, it's rocking. All right. Now that it's free, I mean. We may not recommend it so much to use it before because you have to pay 10 bucks to license for it. Right. But now that's free and we're showing you how to install it, there's absolutely no reason you wouldn't want to use this. Right, unless, unless you're making money. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to go ahead and untar L IPP I832 Itanium. Now, even though this says Itanium, just ignore it. Tony's running, as I can show you. Um, AMD Thunderbird. Yeah, he's running, it's, it's Nathlon basically. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and tar XVF. Um, 
L underscore IPP right there. And this takes a second. It doesn't take too long, but uh, it's pretty big, so it does take a second. And come on, baby. All right, so we're done. So we go CDL, IPB, BU, 4.1.2.003. All right. So we've got two things in there. We've got an install file and an IPB underscore license. You're uninstalled. Now, if your license is installed incorrectly, this will fail. And then you'll know it failed because it said that it failed. All right, so we're going to press 1 to go ahead and install. And we see there that it's going to install the files in temp, IPB32, ITM. This is important because um, you're running this on Slackware, it will fail. Um, this, this part will fail, but we need it to make the RPMs to actually go in that directory. So i got to read the license agreement and hit spacebar to skip a screen at a time. Oh, we're putting this through uh, fast motion, so we actually were reading it. Yeah, we were reading it. The we whole read thing. this previously to this, this screen. All right, so what's happening now is um, it's, it's basically extracting an RPM. And why it's looking all gay like this is because... Uh, Intel? No, because it's running, we're running BNC, uh -huh. and BNC doesn't handle the screen refreshes. We're using uh, SWF, what is it called? VNC to SWF yeah. to capture the screen. Yeah, the first episode, as you all fundamentally complained about how horrible the uh, screen was, that was uh, what we call uh, VGA to uh, VCR. VCR. <laughs> then VCR into uh, Firewire, and then that was compressed, hence really bad quality. <laughs> so, yeah, this works really good. Yeah. So, so and we are planning. A brief reshoot of episode one. By brief, I mean we'll go through the install real quick. We're not going to sit down and make everything like we did the last one, but uh, we'll go through the basics of how to install Asterisk using this VNC to SWF. Right, and we're going to try to get maybe that done before DEF CON. Yep. We'll see how fast uh, Tony gets Tony gets the editing done on this. Yeah. Oh yeah, and we're going to DEF CON too. Yeah. So. We didn't mention that. And we'll, hey, hopefully we'll have some T-shirts um, for sale. Ten dollars. Ten dollar. Um, well, not this time. Do we order that? Yeah, they're more expensive than that. First time, sorry about that. No, we have a major shirt too. That's yeah, they're gonna be about fifteen bucks, I think. And uh, we'll have if if you're a beggar guy like me, get there. Come just if you see us, walk up to us, say hi, whatever. We'll be wandering around. If you want a T-shirt, I'll have some in my backpack all day. Um, if you're a beggar guy like me, you might want to be the first one to get there because we're only gonna have one double X shirt. Um, if you're wearing extra, extra larges, you're probably going to be set. Uh, large is what a couple of, but I'm not sure about mediums. You probably don't have any mediums or smalls. So no. So you probably get an extra large and you can you know, cut it off if you want. Yeah, there you go. But uh, <laughs> we're only going to have 12 of them. And uh, we're taking two of them. So <laughs> there will only be 10 available for use. All right. So our RPM failed like I said it would. This is not a big deal. So go ahead and press Enter to continue. And it's going to ask you, we want to install it or exit. We want to exit. And our codec is located in CE temp. IPP32, I, whatever. It's right there. <laughs> All right. So we want, to, we want to install this. Now, since we're running Slackware, we need to be a little, little tricky with it. Otherwise, it won't install. We're going to say no depths. So RPM minus I, which means install. H, which I don't know what the hell that means. And V means verbose. Oh, H stands for show hashes, I think. So it'll actually show the little hashes as it installs. All right, no depths. So a no depths means it doesn't do a dependency check to make sure you have other RPMs installed. All right, as you can see, I already have it installed. So uh, it doesn't it doesn't worry about reinstalling it. It's going to do the exact same things that we just did. All right, so we're going to go back to the root. Free G729. Okay. And we need to untar our LIPP, whatever the hell it is. L underscore IPP dash sample coding right there. Alright. We're gonna go to speech coding. We're gonna go to, then we do a patch. What this does is it's, it goes in and the IPP patch will change 
the, the samples to fit so it fits the Asher style. It has two directories back. There. It kind of fixed everything, but not really. So now we have to go to the G729 flow directory. Because that's what we use. And then VM include sys. Alright, so we've got this VM underscore types underscore limit 32. This took me forever to figure this out. So the three key, the thinking's already been done for you. And uh, Tell me thank you at uh, Death Con. Buy us alcohol. Buy us alcohol. <laughs> that would be awesome. All right. So basically what we do is we comment this line. And I am not a C coder, just like I'm not a pro coder. The thread handle. I'm going to go ahead and do mutex. does, I don't know. I just have to figure out how to do it. I think that's the last one. 58. 58. All right. That will take care of that. directory so we're in the G729 flow directory. We want to go and edit the make file because we're not going to use this make file for what it's defaulted to. It's defaulted to uh, pay four and we're not going to use that because we have a different optimization flag that we use. And we are also going to copy the build the build script that I created. Called new dash build. See right here. We're going to edit new dash build just so I can show you um, that this line is wrong and I need to copy in the right line. Basically, um, I use the asterisk optimizations when I when I built the codec, which is right here. So just copy this line right out of there. Plus it names it correctly so you don't have to worry about uh, copying it. So good. And don't unless unless you're running um, the uh, the compiler that the Intel compiler, don't do anything down past here because um, yeah, it's based on the Intel compiler. I'm gonna change this to, to wide instead. Okay. Just gonna go ahead and paste it right there, and I don't even worry about what this does. If you just copy it, it'll work. <laughs> so we change mod plus x on new new build .nsh forward slash new dash build .nsh. Okay. My, uh, <laughs> when I was commenting out code, I, I messed up. So, CVM, CVM, Sys. I didn't make a patch for this um, for the simple reason that this code could possibly be copyrighted. And so, um, making a patch is not a good idea. I don't want to get sued. So Intel, if you're watching this, which you're not, um, you decide that it's okay for us to write a patch, you can email either Tony at AstroCast.com or John at AstroCast.com and we'll gladly get one for you. Alright, new build .sh. Yeah, we're uh, we're... And we 
to compile it. And it still fails. Why did it fail this time? Then just use We're regular good. phones. Yeah. Don't use a green screen. Alright, let's make sure that. Let's make sure the phone go ahead, goes ahead and sinks back up here. Not yet. But sometimes that latest firmware that green screen put out, it seems like sometimes the phone takes a really long time to uh, reboot. To reboot. Not reboot so much as actually connect. And it's a distinct possibility that this phone won't connect. I'm going to go 
and there it is. I just heard the phone. So now Tony should be able to dial 600 or any, anything, the 700 even. The codec is converting between GSM and G729 now. Yeah. If, if you hadn't have paid for the codec, it wouldn't do the codec conversion. It just would do pass-through. So it's actually converting between. There are a couple of more utilities in the free G729 folder. Uh, the IPP underscore sample speech coding. Uh, G729 flow in the bin folder. There's a, there's a, you can actually go and convert sounds from GSM or from ULAW to G729. We're not going to go into that. Um, if you need more information, uh, like from the show notes, you can go you can go to the homepage where the patch is from. The homepage is uh, readytechnology.co.uk, and I'll just um, pop them up here really quick so that way you can all see it. Ready. Technology.co.uk slash Here's the homepage, readytechnology.com slash open IPP codex G729, G723. Yeah. That's yeah, short URL for you to say. Yeah. But um, he has all the information. Um, unfortunately, uh, as I found out, um, some of his steps become incorrect with the latest version of Asterisk or the later versions of Asterisk. So, um, you know, you, you just. Follow my steps and they'll get compiled at least up to version 1.2.9.1. So, anyways, I think that about covers. Now that, that should do her for a while. I think that, that I, I think that I've said everything that I need to say. <laughs> so you look forward to another ver or another episode of Ashcast. I'm assuming that it won't be till after mid to late August. Uh, like we said again, we're going to DEF CON this year. We'll be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Look for us at the barbecue. I think we're planning on going to the we're, we might We might be at the talks barbecue. We'll be a lot of the talks. Um, otherwise, you'll see us walking around. Um, hey, and if you're planning on going to, uh, going to DEF CON and you're interested in maybe buying a shirt, why don't you just shoot us an e email? I'll shoot Tony an email, probably be better. Yeah. You know, maybe we can get, get you on a list or something. Tony at astrocast.com. Tony at astrocast.com. We'll be staying at the... Uh, and the beer. Yep. The beer. 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 Yep. We're actually in the hotel. We're not giving our hotel rooms, but <laughs> we'll actually be at the hotel. So uh, if you want to get together or something like that, give us an email. And uh, we'll try to get your shirts too. So.